Okay, we have a video over standard A.3c, which is graphing linear functions on the coordinate plane and identifying features such as x-intercept, y-intercept, zeros, yada, yada, yada. Here's our first question. Ask for which graph represents 3x plus 5y equals negative 15. Well, you got to be careful because this equation is in what we call standard form, and we can't really know much about the graph while it's in standard form, so we always, always, always want to visualize this thing when it's in slope-intercept form. So in order to get it in slope-intercept form, we know that slope-intercept form, or our goal, looks like y equals mx plus b. And so the idea is if I take this equation and I get y by itself, this will be in slope-intercept form. So let's try to get the y by itself over here. I'm going to start by adding 3x to each side. And we have 5y equals 3x minus 15. And I'm going to divide by 5 on each side. And then whenever I divide two terms by this 5, I divide the 3x by 5 and the negative 15 by 5. When I divide 3x by 5, I just want to leave that as a fraction because the number next to x is going to be our slope. So I could turn that into a decimal and be 0.6, but that doesn't really help us when we're trying to visualize our slope as a rise over a run. So if I leave it as a fraction, I like the rise over the run. I prefer that. And then negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3. So I'm looking for an equation that has a y-intercept of, of negative 3, and a slope of 3 fifths. So this one has a y-intercept of negative 3. This one has a y-intercept of negative 3. That one has an x-intercept of positive 3. And this one has an x-intercept of negative 3. So I'm, I'm getting rid of those answer choices. We're down to a 50-50. And then we know that our, our graph is going to uh, have a rise of 3 and a run of 5. And so here, these both rise 3 and run 5. And this graph rises 3 and runs 5. The only difference is that this graph is going down and to the right. That is a negative slope. So that would be a slope of negative 3 fifths on that line. So that's why B is going to be our answer. This is the one with our positive slope. We want to rise 3 and run 5 in this positive direction. Okay, give us a table of values, and it says, which is a zero of a function? Well, I want us to know this terminology. A zero is an x-intercept. It's another term for x-intercept. So we have so many ways that we could do this problem. Um, but first, I'm just going to talk about one little miscon misconception that will probably trick a lot of you. An x-intercept is the value of x, which would be some number, or I can even do it like this, value of x when y is zero. This is what an x-intercept looks like. This point right here is actually a y-intercept. So don't pick that. Notice it, 12 is an answer choice. They're going to try to trick you and get you to pick the y-intercept, but it's asking for a 0, which is the x-intercept. And so one of my favorite ways of doing problems like this is just to look at it on, a, on the graph. Um, when I look at it on the graph, I could plot these three points. Negative 3, 18 is going to be up here somewhere, so that's off my graph. Then negative 2, 16 is going to be up there. Negative 1, 14 is off my graph. 0, 12 is off my graph. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's going to be somewhere in here. 7, 8, 9. Yeah, I like that. And then um, 2, 8 would be right there. And we can see that my graph is changing. It's going down by 2 every time. So all I need to do is keep subtracting 2 until we run into the x-axis. If I continue that line and I were to just draw it, you see it's 0 is going to be right there at 6. Okay? Another way of doing a problem like this, um, probably a more algebraic way. Actually, here's, here's a good way. You don't have to do any algebra. I can just keep my table going. I know it's going to be 6, then it's going to be 4, and then it's going to be 2, and then it's going to be 0. And that's the point we're looking for. We're looking for when y is 0. So then I just keep going 3, 4, 5, 6. So if I just continue my table down, we'll eventually find the 0. Or in other words, the value of x when y is 0, that's just going to be 6. So keep that table going to find the 0 as well. But the moral story here is that a 0 is an x-intercept, and an x-intercept is the value of x when y is 0. A graph is shown which of the following equations are represented by the graph. Okay, So you might have more than one right answer. Um, 
So looking at this, I'm just going to go through the answer choices. First answer choice, I can eliminate right off the bat, okay? Because I, while I do like that they have a y-intercept of negative 2, and you can see that they've got a y-intercept of negative 2, they have a slope of negative 3 halves. They're, they're describing a line that decreases over time. But we can see that our graph actually increases, so our slope should be positive. So I'm going to eliminate i, or 1, I should say. Then they give us an equation in standard form. Once again, we can't visualize anything when it's in standard form, so let's put this thing in slope-intercept form. I'm going to divide by negative 3 on each side. And once again, that gives me y equals, I'm going to leave this as a fraction because it's our slope. A negative over negative is a positive. 6 divided by negative 3 is going to be negative 2. So that's our equation. Let's see if that matches this. Does our graph have a y-intercept of negative 2? Check. Is the slope 2 thirds? Let's see. I rise 2 and run 3. Rise 2 and run 3. Yep, that does look like a slope of 2 thirds. So I actually like 2 as an answer. Now, answer choice 3, that, this is what we call the factored form of a quadratic. Okay. If you weren't sure if this looked like this, then you just go to your graphing calculator and graph it. Okay, I can go to, to y equals and graph this. You see, this is actually going to look like a parabola. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make a shape that looks like this, that looks nothing like our graph that's given. So we can basically um, nix that one as well. And now we just have to see about number four. Um, on number four, they give us this equation. That equation is in point-slope form. So I'm going to come over here to the side, and I'm going to copy down that equation. It says y minus 2 equals 2 thirds x minus 6. So if we remember what point slope form was from a couple of slides ago, um, it's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So our m is 2 thirds. So this point slope form, it has the right slope because we saw that slope in this equation. We saw that that slope matches the graph. So the slope's good. We just have to see if it passes through the right point. In other words, is the x1, y1 correct? And when I look at it, the x1 is this x-coordinate right here, which is a 6. Be careful, it's not a negative 6, because the x-coordinate is what comes after the minus sign. So it's a 6 for the x-coordinate. The y-coordinate is a 2. So the ordered pair 6, 2 is on the line right there. So this is actually a good equation, because it is the line that passes through 6, 2 and has a slope of 2 thirds. So we took this equation, converted it into slope-intercept form, and it works. We took this equation in point-slope form and see that it also describes the graph, so it works. So I like both of those, and that would mean our answer is 2 and 4, what is that, A? Next problem. The table below shows pairs of values that satisfy a linear equation, so they tell us it's linear. What is the y-intercept of the graph of this function? So. Um, this is a lot like the problem we did last time, except now it's asking for y-intercept. Earlier it asked for a 0, which is an x-intercept. Here it's asking for a y-intercept. Now, um, we're going to do this two different ways. They're both going to be easy mode. Um, but first off, I'm looking at the pattern that's happening in my table. It looks like every time we go backwards on this table, it subtracts 11. So it subtracts 11. Next, it would subtract 11 again and it would subtract 11 again. So if I just back up in my table, remember to find a y-intercept, that's the value of y when x is 0. So if I, if I know it's when x is 0, why don't I just look at my table and back up my table to when x is 0. Here's when x is 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So let's just subtract 11 twice. If I take negative 5 minus 11, that's going to be a negative 16. I don't know if you can really... Maybe if I do that in red, that'll look better. That means here would be a negative 16. It'd be the point 1, negative 16. And if I back one more place to 0, and I subtract 11 one more time, I get negative 16 minus 11. I, I believe that's negative 27. So that's going to be our y-intercept. Our y-intercept here is going to be negative 27. Now, let's talk about the easy mode way of doing this. You remember earlier, if I'm given a table of values, especially if it's linear, we can type them in by pushing stat. Oops, got to turn it off first. Push stat, and then I'm going to go uh, edit as highlighted, so I'm going to go down to enter. 
And now I'm just going to type these points and I'm going to put the x values into L1 and the y values into L2. So I, all I did was I took the x values, typed them into L1, the y values, and I typed them into L2. And so then I'm going to go to, oops, then I'm going to go to stat, back to the stat button, then I'm going to go over to calc, and then I'm going to go down to linreg, hit enter, I'm going to hit enter one more time, and look, it, it spits out our slope and our y-intercept. Because the calculator spits out an equation in slope-intercept form, well, all we were looking for was the intercept. So I can use that linear regression function in my calculator as a different way to get negative 27.